All right, so hopefully since you did the Desmos activity, you probably figured out now that parallel lines have the same slope. You may have even known that before the Desmos activity. So the symbol for parallel looks like this. So for example, I could say line A is parallel to line B, and that right there is a math sentence. So slopes of perpendicular lines, just a reminder, perpendicular lines are two lines that form a right angle. So they intersect and form a right angle, a 90 degree angle. So like the X and Y axis are perpendicular, right? So perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of each other. So you're doing two things. You're changing the sign and you're flipping it. The symbol for perpendicular looks just like this, and an example of a math sentence would be like this, and you would read this as line C is perpendicular to line D. So, if you think that you understand opposite reciprocals, go ahead, stop the video, and give me the slope that would be perpendicular to the slope given. If you need a little bit of assistance, stay with me. So, if a line has a slope of 3 fourths, well, its perpendicular slope would be the opposite reciprocal of 3 fourths, which would be negative 4 over 3. If the slope is negative 5, well, the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5, but then you flip it, it becomes 1 fifth, remember, because negative 5 is negative 5 over 1. So now I really do want you to stop the video and try the next 5 on your own and then tune back in to see if you've got it. All right, there you have it. The first four probably were just fine, but don't forget that something that has a slope of zero is a horizontal line, right? So something that would be perpendicular to that would be a vertical line, and the slope of vertical lines are undefined. Now, when you're asked to write equations to parallel and perpendicular lines, the question will look similar to question number one. Write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form that is parallel to y minus 3 equals 4 times x plus 5 and goes through 3, 2. Now, I'm going to take you through some steps. These steps won't normally be here, but this is really helpful in what you have to do when you're doing this. So, basically, first thing is it's saying, what is the slope of the equation given, right? This equation right here is in point-slope form. Well, the slope of that is 4, and since it's in point-slope form, what point does it go through? Well, it goes through negative 5, positive 3. Remember, when you pull out your point, it's the opposite of the x and then the opposite of the y. So now let's just make a sketch of this. I'm not always going to ask you to make a sketch, but sometimes it's a good idea to make a sketch of what the line looks like. So if you could see like what does it what what makes sense. So negative five three, let's say let's say my scale is ten by ten. So or my axes are ten by ten. So let's go to the left five and then up three. So that first point will end up about there. And we know it has a slope of four. So that's gonna be a pretty steep line, right? We're gonna rise four, run one, rise four, run one. So we're gonna have a line that's pretty steep, right? Like this. Now, since the question is asking you to write an equation of a line that is parallel to this line, what would be the slope of the new line? Well, since slopes of parallel lines have to be the same, the slope is going to have to be 4, and I want it to go through the point 3, 2, right? It's not going through the point negative 5, 3. It's going through a new point, 3, 2. So let's just make a sketch of this over here, so 3, 2, let's say we go to the right 3, up 2, oh, I'm going to say that's about here, and then the line is going to be parallel, right, also having a slope of 4, so not the greatest, but there you go. So if you're just kind of predicting here what my y-intercept is going to be, my y-intercept is definitely going to be negative, and it's probably going to be kind of close to negative 10, okay? So now to write the equation of the new line, well, to do it in slope-intercept form, let's start in point-slope form first. So that would be the new line in point-slope form is going to be y minus, we want it to go through 3, 2, so it's going to be y minus 2 equals 4, and then x minus 3. So there's your point-slope form. 
and then go ahead and now change it to slope intercept form. So distribute and you get y minus two equals four x minus 12 and then add two to both sides and you get y equals four x minus 10. So there you have it. That line right there would be the equation of that new line there, which does make sense, right? We said the y-intercept would be pretty close to negative 10. I took a wild guess and I was right. If you wanted to really check it, you could also take that ordered pair, 3, 2, plug it in for x and y and see if it works, right? So if I plug 3 in for x, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 minus 10 is 2, well, that's what we want. The 2 would be the y value, so that works as well. Let's take a look at the next one. So for this one, I want you to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form that is perpendicular to this equation and goes through the point 6, negative 4. So let's look at my original line. My original line is in slope-intercept form. So the slope is negative 3 fourths of my original line. The point that it goes through is the y-intercept, so that's 0, 2. Now my new line, my new line, since I want it to be perpendicular my new line has to have a slope of not negative 3 fourths. It has to have a perpendicular slope of that. So the opposite reciprocal, which would be 4 over 3. So you change the sign and you flip it. And the point it has to go through is 6, negative 4. So now let's make a sketch of both of those lines. So the first line has a slope of negative 3 fourths and y-intercept of 2. So let's put my y-intercept of 2 and then negative 3 fourths is going to probably look down 3 to the right 4 a little bit like this. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of guessing a little bit. The next one now I want perpendicular has to go through the ordered pair 6 negative 4. So we're going to go to the right 6 down 4. So let's say that's about here and it's perpendicular right? So it's going to have to go a bit like this. So again, this is your new line. This is what we're trying to write. We're trying to write an equation of that line there. So if you think about it, my y-intercept is also going to be negative as well. So the equation of the new line in point slope form, we're using this information, which would be y equals, not y equals, y minus the y value that we're trying to make it go through, which is four, negative four, so it becomes y plus four, equals the slope that's perpendicular, which is four thirds, and then the parentheses x minus the x value, which is six. So there's the point slope form. Now let's convert it to slope intercept form. So we're gonna distribute that four thirds, which is gonna give us y plus four equals four thirds x minus four thirds times negative six. We'll think about what's a third of six. Three goes into six two times, and two times four is eight. So we have minus eight, and then get y alone, subtract four from both sides, and you get y is equal to four thirds x minus 12. And so take a look at that. Does that make sense? That would be the equation of that line, right? We said that it clearly looks like the y-intercept is going to be way down here, which is going to be negative 12. Again, I can double check to make sure this is correct by taking the ordered pair that I want it to go through, 6, negative 4, and plugging it in for x and for y and making sure you get a true statement. All right, so let's take a look at number three. If you feel really confident, I encourage you to just stop the video and give this problem a try. Otherwise, I'm just going to explain it. So write the equation of a line perpendicular to 6x plus 3y equals 12 and goes through 8, 4. Now, I want something perpendicular to this. In order to know what the perpendicular line of this is, I need to know the slope of this line. And this equation is not in point-slope form. It's not in slope-intercept form. It does not actually tell us the slope. So what we need to do is we need to convert this. This is standard form. We need to put it into slope-intercept form so that we know what the slope is. So the first thing I need to do with that question is I need to put that in slope-intercept form. So we're going to solve for y. So the first step to first solving for y is to subtract 6x from both sides, which will leave me with 3y equals 12 minus 6x 
And then to get y alone, you divide everything by 3. Divide everything by 3. And then you'll get y equals, divide both of those things by 3, so that gives you 4, minus 6 over 3 is 2x. So that's my original line. My original line has a slope of negative 2, right, and goes through 0, 4, because I've just converted it to point slope 4. I'm sorry, slope intercept 4. So now the new line, since I want it to be perpendicular, the new line is going to have to have a slope of the opposite reciprocal of that, which is 1 half, and I want it to go through the point 8, 4. So now write the equation of the new line and point slope form to start with. So we're using the information of the new line. So it's going to be y minus 4 equals 1 half x minus 8. And then convert it to slope intercept form. So now I'm going to distribute the 1 half. So you get y minus 4 equals 1 half x minus half of 8 is 4, and then I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and you get y is equal to 1 half x plus 0, but that's just 1 half x. So that would be what the slope-intercept form was, but what if the equation said, write the equation in standard form? Well, you would do all of those steps. You would just then take it one step forward. So the slope-intercept form is that one, and now let's put it into standard form. So subtract the 1 half x from both sides, I like to write that first, so you get 1 half x plus y equals 0, and then you can't have any fractions, and the coefficient of x must be positive, so clear the fraction by multiplying by 2, get rid of the negative on the x by multiplying everything by negative 2, which is going to give you x minus 2y equals 0. So that would be the standard form of the perpendicular line, and this up here is the slope intercept form. Now I did forget to sketch both those lines so let's go back and take a look at that. So the original line had a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 4 so I'm going to go up 4 let's say 4 is about here and a slope of negative 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1 so the slope is going to be about like that so then I want something going through 8, 4. So 8, 4 is going to be about here. And it's got to be perpendicular. So perpendicular is going to be like that, right? So if you take a look at that, it does look like it hits 0 as a y-intercept. And the slope of that line is 1 half. Looks pretty close. All right, let's take a look at the next question. I don't know why those questions say 7 and 8. They should say 4 and 5. Sorry about that. Okay, so these questions are getting you to look at horizontal and vertical lines. So question 4, which might be 7 on your paper, says write the equation of the line parallel to x equals negative 4 and goes through 1, negative 8. Now many of you right now already might know what the answer is, but let's just think through it. What type of line is x equals negative 4? Well, x equals negative 4 is a vertical line, right? So if I sketch x equals negative 4, it's going to be like somewhere over here. So that's where x equals negative 4 lives. A line parallel to this line will also be a vertical line, right? So it will also be vertical, and I want it to go through 1, negative 8. So let's sketch a new line parallel that goes through 1, negative 8. So we go to the right one, down 8. There's the ordered pair, 1, negative 8, somewhere down there. It might even be a little bit lower than that. It doesn't matter. It's a vertical line, right? So now think about that. What would be the equation of that? Well, that line is a vertical line that hits the x-axis at 1, right? So it would be another line, which is just x equals 1. All right, number 5. Write the equation of a line perpendicular to x equals negative 4. Well, let's think about that, right? x equals negative 4, we already said it was right here. If I want something perpendicular going through negative 6, 3, well, let's think negative 6, 3 is somewhere here. Perpendicular would be a horizontal line, and a horizontal line hits the y-axis at what value? Well, if this point was 6, 
negative 6, 3, then that's going to be 0, 3, and the y value matches. So the equation of a perpendicular line to that would be y equals 3. All right, so now when you practice on your own, the leading questions aren't going to be there. So you're going to have to think through all of these. You can choose to make sketches or not. I find that making sketches is really helpful. But think through what I typically do with these questions is I would then I would write down off to the side, what's my original line? Write down the slope and y-intercept of all of that or the slope and the point of all of that. And then write down, okay, my new line has to have this slope and go through this point. And you're always gonna be writing an equation of a new line. You're really only using the equation in the problem for the slope. That's all you need it for. And then you're writing something parallel or perpendicular to that line. Reminder that when it's perpendicular, you have to change the slope. It's going to be the opposite reciprocal. Or, if we're talking about horizontal and vertical, they're going to have slopes of zero or slopes that are undefined. All right, good luck with your practice.